And hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Siberia. If you remember last time, Kate got on, finally got the clockwork train wound up after sitting through a very long lecture from um, Professor Pons. And the train got wound up, it started, and it drove like 20 feet and then stopped. So we need to figure out why the train has stopped and what we can do about it. So... Let's go see what's going on. We've obviously been stopped by the wall here. So, let's go see. We can walk around, but we can't do anything yet. And you notice I get a conversation icon here. That's because Oscar is actually has gotten out of the train and is in this little building for some reason. What are you doing there, Oscar? It is imperative that we comply with railroad and customs regulations, Kate Walker. Oscar, don't you think we could drop the trifling details once and for all? We need an exit visa to get beyond the wall, Kate Walker. <sighs> and you wouldn't know where I could get one of them from, would you? There is usually some form of authority stationed at a guard post that is strategically positioned to issue such a visa. Yeah. And you wouldn't know where that was, would you? Okay. See you later, Oscar. Yes, Kate Walker. All right. Now, this is another one of the game's doors that will highlight that you can't get into. We need to go into this door over here. Oh, another phone call. Hello? Kate! Oh, is that you? What's going on? Well, I finally got the mechanical train wound, and I hope it's going to take me to Hans Varlberg. I had to sort things out with a couple of weirdo sailors, and they probably ripped me off. But now I'm blocked behind this massive wall. You should see it. It's huge. I'm not talking about that. I want to know what's going on with Dan. What do you mean? I bumped into him at Maggie's Do, and he said you'd argue. That's a bit over the top. Things got a bit heated the last time we called, that's all. No need to go overboard. I don't mean to be Miss Melodramatic, but he didn't seem in such great shape. He had his down in the dumps head on. <laughs> like Dan has a down in the dumps head. Well, yeah, when that shock of hair flops over his forehead, and his eyes missed up, and his eyebrows kind of creased together. I'd never noticed. Maybe I did go a bit too far, but he's got such a goody two-shoes image of me that sometimes I just lose it. And this case is taking up a lot of headspace. I was just looking for a bit of compassion. Well, you sure got mine. So, what's going down? Like I said before, I'm kind of getting somewhere, but it's slow. This Hans Vorlberg guy is getting more and more fascinating by the day. Okay, well, anyway, it doesn't sound like you're bored. Not like back here in the office. Every day is boredom day. It's just no fun without you. When are you coming back? Shouldn't be long, I hope. Look, I've got to go. See you soon. Well, call us again real soon. And be easier on Dan next time, huh? I'll try. Okay, I gotta question the timing here. Kate talked to Dan and had the argument right after she wound up the train. She immediately got on the train, it traveled like 20 feet, and stopped at the wall where we are now. That argument couldn't have been more than 30 minutes ago. Um, but somehow Dan has had time to go to Maggie's Do, whatever that was. I guess she had a party. 
and her friend here has um, bumped into Dan and found out about this argument and then called her about it. Does time pass differently here than it does back in New York? Are we near a black hole or something? I don't get it. Um, also, Kate, your best friend is at home hanging out with your fiancé, uh, paying close attention to his emotions and how the hair flops in his eyes when they're misting up and that sort of thing, and she's complaining about being bored. Now, I don't know. Is that a warning sign to anyone besides me? Kate doesn't seem to catch it. Uh, here's another door you can't go through. It's locked. No point. It's locked. Yes, we noticed. So let's go this way. Nice view of the What is that car for? See, the winding station's right there. The train is here. It has literally moved 10 feet. See? The winding... It literally moved a train length forward. And the conversation... Okay. Um, I'll stop obsessing over that little minor detail now. Um... Okay, there's a guy standing right here. It's a little hard to see him. Good day to you, sir. Captain Melatesta, Commander in Chief of the Barikstad Border Post, at your service, madam. All right. I need a visa to cross the wall and to continue my journey to the east. They told me that you are the only person in a position to issue such a visa. Indeed. This responsibility is part of my duties. However, I am not currently issuing visas because nobody must venture beyond the wall. And why not? It's far too dangerous, in particular for a lady of your standing who is traveling unescorted. Dangerous? What exactly do you mean, Captain? The enemy, miss. The enemy. I've been observing them for several years through my telescope. There's one particular horseman stationed yonder. He's a scout from the invading enemy army, and he's been spying on us. So I have to be extremely vigilant. He knows that I know he's there, you understand? And as long as I keep my eye on him, he won't dare try anything. Are you sure? Please, take a look for yourself. And we're going to ask about Hans, just to be thorough. Is the person who takes care of the gate anywhere around? There is no person who takes care of the gate. Believe you me, ma'am. I have been the one and only guardian of this gate since 1968. That year, I took over the position from the late Lieutenant Colonel Malatesta, my own father. In that case, can you tell me how the mechanism works? It sure looks complicated to me. Not at all. It is child's play for anyone who takes the time to work out its surprisingly straightforward logic. And from the looks of your locomotive, it shouldn't pose you any problems. Why do you say that? When I caught sight of your formidable locomotive, I immediately said, Heavens, only Hans Vorlberg could design such an engine. And I know what I'm talking about, ma'am, because he invented the gate's original mechanism. It was his last creation here in Barkstad. So you know Hans Varlberg? No, I mean, not personally. I was only a baby when he stayed in Barkstad. My father spoke often of him, and I knew about his inventions. He left very many things behind him. I know. In any case, I noticed that his fantastic knack for inventing has not deteriorated with age. Uh, how's he doing? I don't know. In fact, I don't actually know him. I'm searching for him. An inheritance matter. I hope his train is going to lead me to him. And why not? His inventions are always full of surprises. Okay, again. Don't mind me if I retire, Captain. Please, madam. My respects. Again. Hans would have had to have built the winding mechanism for the train 
before he built the train in order for it to be here. Unless he popped in in the past couple of years and put the grinding station there really quick. Unless these kind of trains go everywhere. I don't get it. Okay, let's go see this horseman that this guy's all concerned about. Yeah, it kind of looks more like a guy riding a lizard to me. Or maybe it's a white walker. Isn't that what you normally find behind walls? Okay. Oh, this is the focus button. How strange. I can't see a Cossack horseman at all. There's just a dead tree in the middle of an empty plain. That poor captain must have really bad eyesight. Uh, yeah. I doubt he'll believe us if we try to tell him. Let's see what else we can get in. Other trouble we can get into here. Look! Broken glasses. If they belong to the captain, then he sure has eye problems going by those lenses. Well, if you remember, we have something that's good for eyesight. Remember? Ingala Cola Powder? Let's put that in these convenient wine glasses. And actually, Kate, those aren't the cleanest looking wine glasses I've ever seen, but okay, whatever. And let's do something with some of this um, Forest Sauvignon wine that we got a while back. What do you think? Colonel, sir. Captain, yes. But you have the air of a great officer. Uh, you flatter me, miss. Unfortunately, I am afraid that we frontier soldiers are often forgotten by the military administration. Ah, oh, there's no justice. I sympathize with you, Captain. Let us forget our worries for a moment and have a little drink together in the name of friendship. Uh, it would be my pleasure, miss, but the regulations strictly forbid it. Come on. A little glass of wine never hurt anybody, and nobody need know. Wine, miss? You are putting me in a very delicate situation. Don't deny yourself, Captain. Just a little glass. I assure you, it is excellent. Well, perhaps just a drop. How does he drink with his nose that high up in the air? What I Here's your glass. To your good health, Captain. And to yours, miss. Hmm. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've drunk wine in such pleasant company. I admit, it is excellent. Isn't it? You wouldn't think it came from Barrickstadt. It is made from the Amazon Forest Sauvignon grape that has been miraculously conserved and cultivated in the station garden. Well, well, well. The university authorities kept that one to themselves. You know, Captain, it is essential that I continue my journey eastwards. Please, don't even think about it. As I've said, it's extremely dangerous. The enemy is spying on us. Perhaps your Cossack horseman isn't quite what you thought. Perhaps it's just a dead tree twisted into a strange shape. You should take another look. You never know. Go on, Captain. Give it a try. So be it. I will make this concession to the fairer sex, miss. But it does seem to be quite ridiculous. Incredible. How is this possible? By what strange magic? How could I have been so wrong for so long? The enemy was only a tree. I'm so ashamed. It's not that bad, Captain. It's only human to make mistakes, after all. A tree? Nothing but a dead tree. Pull yourself together, Captain. It's okay. And now I suppose there's nothing stopping you from issuing me a visa? Yes, of course. There is no more danger. All these years, 
And now the Cossack has gone. There is nothing left to watch. Captain, you should be delighted. From now on, you don't have to stay pinned to your watchtower. Travel can start up again normally. You will be able to resume your regular duties like issuing entrance and exit visas. You are right. I will sign you a visa to cross the wall frontier immediately. A thousand apologies. Here, miss. Okay, fine. We're out. Notarized that. And, okay. Thank you, Captain. And keep your eyes open. <sighs> Miss, if we could keep this between ourselves, please. For the sake of my honor, you understand? You have my promise, Captain. All right. Um, if he wasn't letting anybody through the wall, I have to ask the question again. How did that stupid barge get past? Where did it go? It was there, then it wasn't. Okay. Let's go back down and tell Oscar we've got the stupid exit visa. And this is another case where you can't really um, just give him the... You can't talk to him about it, because if you talk to him, you never get the option to give him the visa. What you actually do is you take the visa and use it on the building. Here is the visa. I hope it's regulation, my dear Oscar. Mm hmm? Mm hmm. It is regulation. Here is your ticket. Yep. We have another ticket. Have a good journey, Kate Walker. So, can we go now? Indeed. We are already very late, Kate Walker. <sighs> yeah, and whose fault is that, Oscar? Okay. Let's get back on board the train. And for some reason that wasn't taking, I don't know why. Your ticket, please. You know, Oscar, you might not think so, but I also know a thing or two about procedure, and that's one bit of procedure I'm not going to forget about easily. As you wish, Kate Walker. Yes. For once, we're going to do things as I wish. And it's good to see Kate sticking up for herself all of a sudden, isn't it? All right. Let's give him the ticket. And that's not the ticket. There it is. Okay. Here you go, Oscar. Thank you, Kate Walker. Now, please return to your seat, Kate Walker. Yes, Oscar. Immediately, Oscar. And... I know this has been kind of a short episode, but this is going to be another good break point. I just had it's a little awkward in this last couple of episodes here. So, as the great opening in the wall, a great gate in the wall opens, and the train continues on its way, I am going to fade out for this one, and we will continue on to Kamkolstad, the next stop on the mechanical railway. Until then, this is Dennis. I am Tanstyle the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time.